Hey everyone, in this video I'll be covering Arguments Against Atheism Episode 1 by Made by Jim Bob. In this first installment of Arguments Against Atheism, we explore a common position you may have heard from your atheist friends. We're like biological machines and all of our actions and thoughts and everything are all just like determined by laws of physics and chemistry. I mean, this is basically common knowledge now. Well, Jim Bob, so what? Is there something wrong with this seemingly true fact about reality? Do you reject the field of biochemistry, Jim Bob? In this video, I'm going to give you a fatal argument against this position, and I do mean fatal. Sure you will. Welcome to Arguments Against Atheism, a series that aims to provide clear and simple arguments against common atheist positions. I'm Jim Bob and I'm here to deliver the goods. First, I should clarify, not everyone who is an atheist believes that matter exists and only matter exists, nor does every atheist necessarily defend hard determinism. However, these are common positions taken by atheists. Well, atheism is just like the position that holds like, there's no belief in a god. Like, what are you even talking about? Well, you I really appreciated your intellectual honesty at the start, right before you went into the cartoon straw man. I wish you would show more of that intellectual honesty because you are actually a likable guy. Classical atheism would generally be defined as a negative response to the classical theistic claim. It could be seen as a negative proposition against classical theism. It would not exist without theism. There is a newer atheist movement, though, attempting to define atheism as a lack of belief in all gods which in my opinion is kind of dumb, because if a pantheist told them that their god exists, the atheist would be arguing that the universe doesn't exist, when the universe certainly does seem to exist. Anyways, I think a more consistent definition of newer atheism would be something along the lines of, they just don't choose a god. I am a theological, non-cognitivist, atheist right now personally, and what I mean by that is that theological language is incoherent or has no meaning. But as I delve more into philosophy, I am starting to lean more towards agnosticism in that the God category seems to actually not exist and is just some incoherent grunt you grunt at me as the word God is too broadly used with contradictory and conflicting attributes and natures. Something along the lines of determinism does seem to be the case. Maybe a future version of determinism more inclusive of quantum mechanics would be more accurate, kind of like what happened with physicalism and standard materialism. The point of philosophy, the love of knowledge, Jim Bob, is to discuss these things and try to determine what views seem to correspond or cohere with reality the best. Everyone has a different way of looking at the world. This is the diversity of thought. Yes, and many of you come to that position based on the assumption that physicality is all there is. Physicalism is a much more specific branch of materialism that accounts for everything that actually exists consisting of energy because there is non-material stuff to my understanding. And so when you start talking about materialism and then move to physicalism, that's just really weird, dude. I, I, I get that it's the same initial category, but physicalism itself is much more specific, and you do need to specify, especially from the get-go. This is the better branch to focus on, though, for sure, because it seemingly corresponds better with reality, given the fact that photons exist. Jim Bob, to disprove physicalism, all you have to do is show one non-physical thing that exists. It's literally that easy. That's why physicalism exists, because there are non-material things, energy, such as photons. Standard materialism cannot account for that, which is why there's that distinction. So let's examine the assumption. According to the view that we are all merely biological machines, our actions, our thoughts, and our words are all determined by the laws of physics and chemistry. Let's say it in a much more direct way. Everything we think, everything we say, everything we do are all effects determined by physics and chemistry. Okay. 
I mean, that does seem to mostly be the case. Well, let's take a look at some other effects of physics in the natural world. Let's take a tornado. This is an effect of a cause. Let's call it a combination of natural conditions. This is a blade of grass growing. Another effect of a cause, also a combination of natural conditions. These are two occurrences entirely determined by the laws of physics. Now, would it make sense to say one of these occurrences are more true or more false than the other? No, they just are. They're effects. We could say that a description of one or the other could be more accurate or less accurate, but as far as the effect goes, it is what it is. It's just an effect. It's not true or false. Because it's not propositional. It's an effect of physics. Make sense? Uh, uh. Now, so the make sense that he used there is actually a well-known tactic that's used to get agreements from people early on, like a small agreement, um, to get a bigger agreement later on. Just wanted to point that out. Now, bro, Jim Bob, bro, this is egregious. You answered the question yourself and then basically said you couldn't understand how it's the case. I will explain this to you very clearly. I hope someone is feeding you these lines and this isn't actually your belief because based on this, you don't know what truth means. You are saying the reference are true or false and then saying the response isn't valid due to your misunderstanding. Bro. A referent is not a proposition or a truth bearer. A referent is the actual thing in reality that exists. A referent cannot be true or false. It is the proposition that is true or false. The referent or thing that actually exists. The cat on the mat isn't what's true or false. It is the proposition that is true or false. If you make the proposition or truth bearer, that there is a cat on the mat, the referent, the cat that is actually on the mat, is not the proposition or truth bearer. The cat that is actually on the mat would be the seemingly true fact that corresponds or coheres with reality. Truth, generally, is just some specific relation between a truth bearer and a state of affairs in the world. Easier understood, the proposition corresponds or coheres with reality. In the correspondence theory of truth, the truth value of if snow is white depends on if the proposition snow is white corresponds with something existing in the actual world. This is probably the theory of truth you intuitively hold, but you just don't understand. I recommend you read something about this, and I'll link the IEP article on truth below. There are other theories of knowledge, and they all work under each worldview. So if you were to say another theory of knowledge was correct, it really wouldn't matter here. It is very clear that you do not know what any of these words mean in philosophy. You're just saying things, bro. There's no way this is real and that you believe these things and call yourself a philosopher. Kind of like with the problem of evil, you have to drop one of those for your position to be consistent. Either that this is real, that you believe the things that you say, or that you call yourself a philosopher or theologian. You don't seem to understand any of these terms. I would recommend you read about what truth is, what justification is, and what knowledge is in philosophy. Here's where we have a problem. If all of our thoughts and words and actions are caused by the laws of physics, then they too are effects of physics. That means our descriptions of tornadoes or blades of grass are also just effects which are determined by the laws of physics and chemistry. Well, didn't we just establish that effects of physics are neither true or false? They just are. How can an effect of physics be anything other than what it is, what it's determined to be by the law? If an evaluation or proposition is an effect of physics, how can it be wrong or right? It just is, like a blade of grass or a tornado. Now, my critics will say, no, Jim Bob. Propositions are different because they are descriptions of effects, to which I would respond. Well, those descriptions are just effects determined by the laws of physics, right? Yeah, but we can evaluate our descriptions and see if they comport with reality, to which I would respond. Are evaluations just effects determined by the laws of physics? Yeah, but we can test to see if our evaluations are accurate, to which I would respond. 
Isn't testing just another effect determined by physics and chemistry? So we have a determined effect of physics we call an evaluation, followed by another determined effect of physics we call a description, followed by another determined effect of physics called testing, which requires more effects, more effects, more effects, and on. Yeah, so what's the problem? Well, the problem is it's a vicious circle. And this is this is another example of the evil that you are spreading, Jim Bob. So here is what you're really asking. You're asking, what is the foundation that grounds everything that upholds reality so that we can know claims are true or false? For some reason, you seem to be comparing worldviews here. You are doing an external worldview critique, and it doesn't seem to hold. Vicious circularity is generally defined as when one faces a problem and one solution to the problem has the same issue and the problem propagates when they try to apply the solution. I don't see how you asking a bunch of questions like you think you're going to do leads to vicious circularity. You just presuppose that it would lead to an infinite regress, but if they ground out their claims, that's not necessarily the case. It's very possible for someone to ground everything in a metaphysical claim, like a necessary being, such as the universal quantum field. Now, contingency and necessity are heavily debated amongst philosophers. Let's just assume it's the truth, though. It would be very easy to prove that in this world, the universal quantum field is the necessary being. From there, you do some quick S5 modal logic to prove that the universal quantum field, which is the necessary being in this world, is the necessary being in all possible worlds. Then from there, you could simply say that all other necessary being concepts are superfluous and violate the principle of parsimony. This would be a direct counter to the Christian and Muslim presuppositional position and all necessary being positions and prove them false. In addition to this, an infinite regress isn't inherently fallacious. You would have to prove vicious circularity, even if it was an infinite regress. I think you are coming from a very uneducated necessary being position on the Christian side based on the minimal amount of content that I have seen from you. This is where I gift you the fatal argument against this position. Premise one, effects of physics are neither more true or false than any other effects of physics. Premise two, Thoughts, evaluations, and propositions are effects of physics. Conclusion. Evaluations and propositions are not more true or false than other evaluations and propositions. They just are. You see the... No theologian or philosopher would ever give an argument like this. What made you feel good presenting it? Premise one. Effects of physics are neither more true or false than other effects of physics. Premise two, thoughts, evaluations, and propositions are effects of physics. Conclusion, evaluations, effects, and propositions, effects, are not more true or false than other evaluations, effects, and propositions, effects. So how is that different from saying, premise one, effects of physics are either more true or false than other effects of physics? Premise two, thoughts, evaluations, and propositions are effects of physics. Conclusion, evaluations, effects, and propositions, effects, are either more true or false than other evaluations, effects, and propositions, effects. Both of these appear to be logically valid. This is called a parity. P-A-R-I-T-Y. Parity. A parity in this example is basically an argument that is equal to the prior argument to show the flaws. Now, there's a big problem with premise one's truth value in your argument, Jim Bob, but we will get there. A parody helps you to work through the argument and discover the flaws. Now, I will link this parody argument in the description just so that you can see this, because I think there is a lot of value in using parody arguments. Once again, premise one, effects of physics are neither more true or false than other effects of physics. Premise one, effects of physics are either more true or false than other effects of physics. Premise two, thoughts evaluations and propositions are effects of physics. That's the same for both of them. Conclusion, evaluations, effects, and propositions, effects are neither more true or false than other evaluations, effects, and propositions, effects. Then the parity, evaluations, effects, and propositions, effects are either more 
true or false than other evaluations effects and propositions effects. I'm sorry, I know that was a lot. I'll put this in the description so you can read through this as I'm going through this. Now, what do you think? I think that based off the logical equivalency of the parity, we now need to check out the truth values of the proposition in your argument, Jim Bob. Both your argument and the parity seem to be logically valid in saying completely different things. So let's look at premise one. So first off, saying just physics is basically a straw man, but I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt and just replacing physics with physical processes. It appears to be the case that propositions are effects of these natural processes and they have the ability to be true or false. Once again, while it is true that evaluations and propositions can be considered effects of physical processes, it doesn't follow that they all are all equally true or false. For example, consider the propositions the earth revolves around the sun and the earth is flat. While both propositions are products of physical processes such as human cognition and language, one is true, the earth revolves around the sun, and the other is false, the earth is flat. Therefore, the conclusion that all evaluations and propositions are equally true or false would be false. The other problem I saw was that your argument begs the question. Your argument is basically, premise one, effects of physics are neither more true or false than other effects of physics. Premise two, effects of physics are effects of physics. Conclusion, effects of physics are neither more true or false than other effects of physics. Jim Bob, what all this means is that your conclusion doesn't follow. Sorry, bro. Consequence of this position is fatal to knowledge itself. If any knowledge claim or belief is just an effect of physics, and what we call knowledge is dependent on truth or falsity of a claim, then knowledge is impossible because evaluations and claims are just effects of physics and effects are neither true or false, they just are. The Oops, I guess this means I just showed you how this part is wrong. And wouldn't being demonstrated a coherent account of truth in a different worldview, based off of what you just said, make it possible for knowledge to exist in their worldview? Possibly showing your entire belief system to be false? The position gets worse. If all of our thoughts, actions, and beliefs are effects determined by the laws of physics, then a Christian belief and an atheist belief and any other worldview is just an effect of physics. Saying a Christian has a... You keep saying effects of physics. I'm not coming down on you for this. But I think physical processes would be more accurate in the future when you're discussing this. A false belief is equivalent to saying they have a false effect of physics. How can we believe anything other than which is strictly determined by the laws of physics? How can an effect of physics be false? Well, Right here, it would be your burden of proof. If we are accurately using the term physical processes, that is, to me, you would have to provide justification that propositions can neither be true or false unless you're simply borrowing from our worldview. Well, the atheist might say, well, some effects of physics can be true and some can be false. Okay, so if one effect of physics can be true or false, here's my challenge to the atheist who holds this position. What is the categorical difference between a tornado and thinking? That's an interesting question. I mean, there's a lot more to that than just give me a category, right? These are totally separate subcategories that both fall under the overarching physicalism framework or category, right? This is almost like a trick question in the way this is currently phrased, because no matter what answer they give, it's not going to be physicalism category. And you can just be intellectually dishonest at that point and act like you don't understand categories and ask more questions, right? Now, both of these probably belong to a number of shared and separate categories. How deep do you want to go into categorization, Jim Bob? Well, they might say, duh, a tornado isn't doing any evaluating. Well, let's try again. What is the difference between a tornado and evaluating? Is that off topic? Well, like the difference is like complexity and stuff. Okay, let's look at the level of complexity. What is the difference between an extremely complex machine and a very simple machine? 
Other than potentially more components executing a wider variety of functions, the complex and the simple are both at the effect of physical laws. And as you hear that? Wider variety of functions, the complex and the simple are both at the effect of physical laws. And so that's the possible category equivocation that I warned about a moment ago. As far as we know, a computer doesn't do anything more than what it's programmed to do, regardless of its complexity. The computer doesn't suddenly transcend its category of being a machine simply because it's more complex. So why would the brain from this position? In conclusion, if all... I feel like that rhetorical question and the build-up to it that you just asked literally had no point. That seemed to be a waste of 17 seconds, Jim Bob. All thoughts, evaluations, and propositions are merely effects of physical laws and chemistry. How can a physical effect be false or true? There are no false tornadoes or blades of grass. So why would the naturalistic atheist believe that there are false beliefs? Okay, Jim Bob, it's right there. Right there is where you stepped out of your worldview and borrowed from our shared naturalistic atheistic reality that has been revealed to all through both natural and special revelation. You borrow our shared definition of propositions to be able to make that statement, even though you feigned ignorance earlier in this video. This is just another performative contradiction or a contradiction between the way that you speak and what you actually believe. In your worldview, you have no account for the truth value of anything besides God. You just admitted right here, you have to borrow our definition of propositions to obtain any real form of truth value. After reviewing all three of your arguments against atheism series videos, I am very unimpressed with you. Jim Bob, I know your heart has been hardened. I am sorry for you, brother. Years of rejecting the self-evident truth of our shared naturalistic, atheistic reality really has taken its toll on you. I hope that I have elucidated to you some of the natural and special revelations that have been revealed to you previously, but you've been rejecting in your own righteousness. If I can do anything else to help soften your heart, please reach out. Thank you everybody for watching this. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share.